All right, we're back for our third and final segment of today's Cross Defense. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for sticking around through the entire show. We had some wonderful conversations with Reverend Willie Grills and Sam Schulteis out there in their parts of the world. And what they're doing is serving people with God's word and taking a little bit of extra time out of their day to serve us, to serve you with God's word as well. And I am super thankful for the pastors out there in the Missouri Synod who are willing to join us and do just that. Today, for this third segment, again, as we did last week, it's just me in the studio. And by studio, I mean my office here at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's just me today to comfort the soul. And, you know, that's fine. That's good. I, too, am a pastor. And that's what we're here to do is to equip the mind, excite the imagination, and comfort the soul all with God's word. Before we do that, just by way of reminder, if you want to reach out to me between Mondays, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can do it probably easiest through my contact page over at tyrellbramwell.com. Just click the contact page and send me an email. It'll go right into my email and I'll be able to see that. You can also direct message me on Instagram and you can do the same on Facebook. Over there on those two social media accounts, it is simply at Tyrell Bramwell, or just type in you know Instagram.com forward slash Tyrell Bramwell. Same for Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash Tyrell Bramwell, and you can engage with me on my wall, on my feed, direct message. However, those services work, you can definitely find me there. You also can find my video content on YouTube. Just same thing. It's my name, Tyrell Bramwell. And uh, there you'll find different kinds of video. We used to have cross defense over on that show or over on that channel, excuse me. But um, lately we haven't. And I'm still wrestling around with whether we're, whether or not we should put cross defense on my YouTube channel or just keep it as this radio thing. I, I kind of like, actually, as I'm exploring this, I kind of like just keeping cross defense as the KFUO.org radio show and just maybe giving you a, a few clips or s sample segments over on YouTube, but not the full show. So we'll see how that works itself out. Uh, in the meantime, let's get back into a little comfort for our souls. <clears throat> you heard me reference, as I was talking with Re Reverend Willie Grills in the first segment, you heard me reference something that I've been doing on my Instagram stories. I just barely started, but I explained it as uh, we were talking about being bad influences on uh, listeners, when we were talking about uh, you know getting crystals and all those those weird fantastic things, it, obviously that was all in fun. Same thing with what I'm doing on Instagram. It's kind of a turn of phrase, a, a play on words. I've been posting stories with the uh, the phrase "make them use dirty words" or, or "make them say dirty words," and then giving the actual word that's dirty. So the first one I posted was "make them say dirty words," Christian. Uh, most recently, make them say dirty words, confessional Lutheran. So you can already see what I'm doing here. Uh, it's a it's a spin on the idea. It's not actually a dirty word, but, and here's where we're going to get into the comfort for our souls, for your souls. But in this world we live in today, at the end of 2020, indeed for a lo long time now, and I'm sure for a long time into the future, we live in a world that is upside down and backwards. We live in a world that is very much Isaiah 5.20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We are certainly, firmly in a culture that sees good as evil and evil as good. The world, the unbelieving world, sees what the Christian church teaches as horrendous atrocities, evil, that we would say there is one way to heaven, that there is only one way by which man is saved, Jesus Christ, that we would have the audacity to say such a thing is pure evil in the eyes of the world. Now, it's not evil. It is what is truly good. Our Lord has not left us in this broken snow globe we call the world, full of sin and corruption, death, where we contend against the devil. No, he has not left us there on our own, but ever since Genesis 3.15 with the first gospel, we know that he put forth a plan, put in motion a way to save us, to redeem us, to justify us and take care of our sin problem. That way, 
that solution is Jesus, our Christ. He is good and he makes us good as well. And so I want to tell you to recognize this. Let this be a comfort to you, to your soul, as you live in this world where things are upside down, topsy-turvy, backwards and inside out. The world may convince you, may try to convince you that you are wrong, that you are evil, that you are the darkness, you are the problem, that you are bitter. And that the way to enlightenment, the way to good things, the way to improvement, the way to utopia is to embrace the world's ways, to embrace what they call science and data, to embrace their, their social programs and their ideologies, to abandon God, and to seek your own happiness at all costs, whatever that may be. But you don't need to do that, my friends. No, make them say dirty words. Make the world know you are a Christian and here's how. So here, let's, uh, let's just take a second. We got some time in this last segment. Let me just take a second and read through some scripture passages that really explain what's behind this little cutesy, hashtaggy, soundbitey thing that I'm posting on my social media. Make them say dirty words. Make him call you a Christian. This is what scripture says. And it says it much better than I can in my little turn of phrase. Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That which is truly good, my friend, that which is of the Lord, make him say dirty words. Make him call you a Christian. Make him refer to you as a believer in Christ. Make the world use these words. Why does he do that? Because he's a Christian. Why wouldn't he do this? 
because he believes in Jesus Christ. What do you think makes her say those things that she says? I don't know. I think it has something to do with that Bible that she's always reading. Did you hear about what he's doing these days? Yeah. I think it's all because he's been going to that confessional Lutheran church. Put these dirty words into their mouths, my friends. Make them say dirty words. Scripture is pretty clear on how we are to live. How we can live in a way that will make the world use our vocabulary. That will make the world speak in a way that might just open their minds. Might just give them pause. 1 John 1. 5 to 2, 17. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Those words are fairly familiar to most, I believe. Perhaps if you're a new listener, new to Lutheranism, new to Christianity, you might not recognize them. But for the Christian who's used to going to church, you hear those words on a regular basis. As you confess your sins and you hear that you are forgiven, absolved of your trespasses. We continue with, with John, his first letter. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this, we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected by this. We may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I am writing to you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is also a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Be comforted, my friends. The true light is already shining. Christ Jesus has already come into the world. We have been forgiven. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the father. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not let the world or the things in the world, if anyone loves the world, do not, excuse me, do not love the world or the things in the world, John says. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Yeah, just like, just like Sandlot, forever abides forever. That's amazing. In 2 John, the, uh, the idea of make them say dirty words sounds like this. And this is love, he writes, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment just as you have heard from the beginning so that you should walk in it. 
For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring his, this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him a greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in the wicked works, his wicked works. Make him say dirty words. Make him know that you don't stand for wicked works, that you don't go along with the world, that you're being transformed. Micah 6, 8, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And now let me turn turn the, the page here, shift gears real quick because we have about two minutes to make sure you understand that when I say make him say dirty words, make him use words that define you as a Christian, I'm not saying that you have to keep the law in order to earn your way to heaven. This isn't a, this isn't a merits thing. This isn't do this so that you can merit holiness through through works that you're doing. But this is to say, make the good confession that you already have now as a baptized believer. The confession of faith in Christ that you have received. Live as who you are. This is, this is a word of encouragement that's spawned from your salvation. This is, this is a word that springs out of the baptismal font, motivated by the gospel. You are free in Christ to live for your neighbor, that they would know Jesus and his gracious work of salvation, that he is their savior just as he is yours. Make them say dirty words so they have Jesus Christ on their lips. It's because of the gospel. You have this joy set before you, the joy of living as a Christian by the power of the Holy Spirit, a baptized believer in Christ, nourished by the body and blood of Christ, forgiven. Rejoice, dear cross defense listener out there. Rejoice that you get to make the world use dirty words. Let them say Christian. Let them pronounce the words confessional Lutheran. Let them say the word baptized, forgiven, Bible, believer, justified, sanctified, redeemed, free. Let them say. Make them say. That dirtiest of dirty words, Jesus. Jesus Christ, crucified for the forgiveness of your sins and my sins. He is your Savior. May your souls be comforted. This has been Cross Defense. Thanks for listening this past hour. And until next week, Christ be with you. Cross Defense is a production of KFUO Radio. Find past episodes and support Cross Defense at KFUO.org.